Do you need an organ or blood or marrow transplant? Are you recovering from such a transplant? Or are you just trying to find out more about your roots? If so, the question, what is HLA, human leukocyte antigen, is of great importance to you. We are fortunate to have with us today a senior clinical laboratory scientist from one of the most renowned HLA laboratories in this field. I'm your host, Susan Mann, of The Better Part. Stay tuned to find out what HLA is and why it is so important. Wendy Liang is one of the lucky people whose life's work is her passion. She graduated with a degree in bacteriology from UCLA and then went on to attend the Stanford University Medical Center's School of Medical Technology internship program. With a newly minted medical technology license, she was immediately hired to join the fledgling clinical tissue typing lab by Dr. Rose Payne known as the mother of HLA. With the close mentorship of Dr. Payne, Wendy grew up with the lab, absorbing all the new technologies and processes of this preeminent lab. Wendy is currently a senior clinical laboratory scientist at the Stanford Blood Center. Now, having spent over 40 years at the lab, she has had the unique opportunity to witness history in the making firsthand. Welcome, Wendy. I'm so honored to have you here, joining us at The Better Part. Thank you so much, Susan. Thank you for inviting me. You know, my husband, Futin, had a stem cell transplant uh, at Stanford, and this was over like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And I know you people at the HLA lab provide 24-hour on-call for your transplant patients. I can't imagine how grateful transplant patients are for the services of the HLA lab at the Stanford Blood Center. HLA matching is rather a difficult, a daunting subject. Let's approach it from an area that is simpler for us to understand, such as matching blood types. When was the first successful blood transfusion? Their real documented case came about in the early 1800s. I see. And uh, the doctor at that time was an English obstetrician mm -hmm. who had a patient who had just given uh, birth mm -hmm. and was hemorrhaging. Oh dear. So this, in this case, it's a case of uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Right, right. So what did the doctor do? He uh, took about a half cup of blood from the father or from her husband right. and infused the father it, of the child, the father of the child it. and infused that half cup of blood uh, by a syringe. Just using a syringe? That's right. Oh my gosh, okay. In, into the, uh, the mother mm -hmm. and uh, the hemorrhaging stopped. Oh, and, that's wonderful. Uh, so that was uh, the first successful blood transfusion that is of note. Wow. I'm so surprised it was successful, given that so many things could have gone wrong. It was very fortunate that the husband's blood type must have been compatible. Uh, what could have happened if it, if it weren't the case? Well, several things. Uh, the woman would have continued to hemorrhage, mm -hmm. leading right. to a fatal outcome. Right. Uh, oh, my or, goodness. Or within minutes, uh, she could have had... Uh, uh, a uh, fever and chills reaction. Mm -hmm. She could have uh, had uh, other uh, symptoms uh, that uh, indicated something was wrong. Immediately. Immediately. Right. right. Now, yet blood typing is rather simple. You could probably explain it to us in a few sentences. Could well, you? I will try. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have uh, basically four main blood group types. Mm -hmm. There's O, a, B, and AB. Mm -hmm. Blood group O being the most common, mm -hmm. uh, which, by the way, is in 48% of the population. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's good. Yes, it's very good mm -hmm. because that allows the O blood group type to be the universal donor. I see. So uh, red cells mm -hmm. can be transfused to anyone in mm -hmm. an emergency mm -hmm. in O, A, B, or AB individuals. I see. So maybe the husband was an O donor, right? Quite possibly. <laughs> we actually, history doesn't really tell us well, no, what it was. No, that's correct. Uh -huh. yes. It wasn't until later they found out about blood typing, right? Yes. Now, we're going to move on uh, with uh, tissue typing. Now, tissue typing, I suspect, is a lot more complicated than blood transfusions, right? Yes. Well, tell us, when was the first uh, tissue transplant done? Well, the first tissue transplants were uh, around the time of the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the people who is uh, attributed to be the father or one of the, uh, the main pioneers, main pioneers mm -hmm. of uh, uh, tissue transplants mm -hmm. would be Peter Medawar. I see. And uh, Peter Medawar had a history, he was a zoologist hmm. who later on went to become a clinician. I see. And uh, what, what had changed his uh, career right. path mm -hmm. was that uh, during World War II, he witnessed an airplane crash mm -hmm. close to his home. I see. And at that point, that was his uh, uh, defining moment, right. if you will, that he wanted to uh, improve the lives of people and to save right. lives too. So what happened, the, the, the pilot crashed, right? Yes, and, and had severe burns. Very bad burns. Very bad I, burns. I see. And, uh, and that changed his whole career. It and he, did. And he wanted to help these burn patients, right? Exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. So what happened with the first tissue transplant? He right. became a specialist in burn trauma. Oh. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I see. And so uh, it was at uh, the Glasgow Royal Infirmary mm -hmm. in where Scotland. Mm -hmm. in Scotland that mm -hmm. he and a colleague were treating a uh, burn patient mm -hmm. with uh, actually two uh, transplants or mm -hmm. two tissue uh, grafts. I see. Uh, the first graft Mm -hmm. was part of the wound was covered with the patient's own healthy tissue. Mm -hmm. but from a then, different part of his body. Yes, from okay. an unburned mm -hmm. part of his right. body. Right. The other part was uh, covered with uh, tissue, mm -hmm. or skin graft, mm -hmm. from his brother. Mm -hmm. But the interesting part of this story mm -hmm. is that the patient's own skin grafted and the skin was intact, mm -hmm. but the part that was grafted from the brother, mm -hmm. the skin was destroyed within a really? few days. Really? And yet you think skin is quite a, a simple thing to transplant. It's not like an organ yet, right? Yes. And it's his brother. You know, you'd think that there's some close genetic material, right? Exactly. Wow. So, what happened then? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they attempted to uh, graft another piece of skin from the brother. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened mm. that the tissue, the skin was destroyed mm -hmm. and rejected. And not uh, in four days mm -hmm. as originally, but wow. even faster. Wow. And so with repeated attempts, Mm -hmm. they were not able to uh, get a successful tissue graft. Wow, it seems like there, there must be something in our body that tells us that something foreign has been introduced and it tries to get rid of it. So what's really going on? Well, that's exactly right, Susan, mm -hmm. because it gave Medivoir uh, and uh, his colleague the mm -hmm. idea that uh, there is something that the body recognizes as self, self and right. non-self, mm -hmm, i.e. Mm -hmm. the brother's tissue. Right. Wow. Now, I think we can finally try to answer the question, uh, what is HLA? You told, uh, you told me about this wonderful story about 
kind of a aha moment uh, in HLA. Could you tell us that story? Yes, of course. Uh, in uh, the starting of uh, the uh, whole immune system and the concept of uh, self and non-self, mm -hmm. in the uh, 50s and 60s, uh, mm -hmm. we had uh, some core researchers mm -hmm. uh, who were able to identify uh, these factors mm -hmm. on cells, mm -hmm. uh, white blood cells. Now, I see. HLA stands for human leukocyte mm -hmm. antigens. Mm -hmm. Leukocytes are the white blood cells in our system. Mm -hmm. We have the red cells, and red cells have a type. Mm -hmm. HLA, white cells, mm -hmm. white cells have a type of their own. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the um, investigations of the core group of researchers uh, that uh, defined and identified HLA from work uh, involving white blood cells mm -hmm. and serum mm -hmm. from pregnant ladies. I see. Uh, much of the work being done at Stanford, of course, oh. and uh, Dr. Payne. I see, what your she mentor. Did. <laughs> yes, my mentor. Some of her early work, uh, mm -hmm. groundwork for mm -hmm. the, the whole system of HLA began with uh, the identification uh, or recognition of white blood cells from mm -hmm. individuals I would see. clump when mm -hmm. they were introduced to antisera from pregnant women who mm -hmm. had had multiple pregnancies. So let, let me see if I can understand this. Uh, with a pregnant woman, uh, this is a woman who does have something that didn't belong to self, uh, the fetus, right? That's correct. Who had half the genetic uh, material uh, from the fetus's father, yes. right? So now we see the interaction of uh, a person's self and how in this immune system will, uh, will look upon these other cells that are non-self. But obviously, you know, we don't reject that. That's right. Okay. And that's one of the mysteries that's still ongoing and has not been totally understood yet right. as far as mother's tolerance mm -hmm. to the fetus. But what is interesting is this is the aha moment that guided people to be looking at that, right? Exactly. Oh, wow, that, that's amazing. So now human implantations have progressed from skin grafts to organs, even complicated organs, right? Yes. And to uh, bone and marrow. Now, how has this new knowledge of HLA helped in this? Well, it's helped because we, we recognize that there is an immune system. Mm -hmm. So the recognition of self versus non-self mm -hmm. is based on the immune, immune system. So these, which, this is a system that tells you that something foreign is coming in your body. Exactly. And you're trying to fight against it, right. And this is where we're, HLA comes in because wow. it's the system that regulates mm -hmm. the immune mechanism of I our bodies. See. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, how many of these HLAs are there? And are there some that are more important for, for different types of tissues? Yes, well, there are right now upwards of 22,000 of these individual HLA protein types. Wow. And um, what uh, I should go back and tell you about is uh, HLA mm -hmm. are really cell surface proteins mm -hmm. that Sitting uh, on exists. the surface of the cell. Yes, mm -hmm. sitting on the surface of the cell mm -hmm. that are on all nucleated cells mm -hmm. of the body. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to uh, illustrate, I would like, with your permission, to mm -hmm. uh, go back and give a review of basic that, biology. I think I need it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, so we know DNA. Right. And uh, DNA resides in the nucleus of a cell. I see. Hence, uh, being a nucleated uh, cell 
in order to so, do HLA. I see. So a non-nucleated cell won't have these things. That's correct. Right. Because they don't have a nucleus, and mm -hmm. so major, uh, a major uh, non-nucleated cell would be a mature red blood cell. Red blood cell. I see. Okay. That carries the oxygen around oh, in, okay. in your blood. But all the other cells have mm -hmm. nuclei, uh -huh. and at the very center mm -hmm. have the DNA. I see. And then DNA is encoded by two sets of genes. Mm -hmm. We inherit one set from father, mm -hmm. one set right. from mother. Right. So the, the DNA, the genes, are on the chromosomes. Mm -hmm. You have two sets of chromosomes mm -hmm. that are inherited from your parents, mm -hmm. which are at the center in the, mm -hmm. uh, the nucleus, mm -hmm. uh, the center of the cell. Mm -hmm. And so the nucleus is basically the information hub mm -hmm. of the cell. I see. When the information from the cell nucleus is given to the factory to mm -hmm. produce proteins, mm -hmm. then proteins like HLA mm -hmm. will be manufactured I and see. go to the cell surface oh. with an anchor in the cell membrane. Oh, so it's, it's going to sit on the surface with a little root going down? Yes, oh, so okay. the, if you could picture like a flagpole, uh -huh. okay. the, the HLA protein <laughs> uh -huh. is sticking outside, on, outside of the cell surface mm -hmm. with a particular flag. Right. The flag will be the uh, HLA Type. Good. Well, 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 I'm kind of relieved because I thought there's going to be, uh, you know, tens of thousands of uh, uh, HLAs, but there aren't, right? How many are there? There are uh, right now about 22,000 plus oh. and growing uh, number of HLA varieties oh. or proteins. What are the important ones to in transplant, though? Well, it depends on the, the type of transplant. Mm -hmm. uh, for a bone marrow or mm -hmm. stem cell transplant, mm -hmm. it requires the highest degree mm -hmm. of um, matching or identification of the type. And how many is that? They do five groups of two Okay. Genes. Oh, of types. okay. Well, that's more. That's so more that's like 10. it. So that's ten. So that's ten. Because that's I remember 10. when my husband was being matched. You know, we talk about how many. Uh, you know, seven out of ten or eight out of ten for, for his donor matches. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like these ten that we're concerned with when we're doing an organ transplant. Right? Not necessarily an organ transplant, but bone marrow. Bone transplant. marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant, which is the most, uh, the highest requires required. the highest resolution. Oh. Oh, that's so, interesting. And the reason for that mm -hmm. is that in a bone marrow transplant, you're replacing mm -hmm. the immune system or replacing I the see. system that identifies self and non-self. I see. So, in for, so it's even, so more, uh, even more important, It's right? more important or oh, most important for I bone see. marrow transplantation. For the matching. For the matching mm. uh, of those. And... Uh, in fact, there are more than 10 mm -hmm. uh, uh, types mm -hmm. or varieties mm -hmm. or five groups. We type for seven mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. So what happens in the case of an uh, unrelated uh, marrow? But group, seven so, with two factors, so it's 14. So, so 14 total. Right. But for the purposes of a screening mm -hmm. and the marrow registry, yes, they, they have the basic five, five. Okay. main that's, that's, uh, groups. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. What is the most common organ? Oh, that the is most being common organ mm -hmm. was the first organ to be transplanted, which is the kidney. Kidneys. Yes, oh, okay. and from that, uh, additional organs uh, came to be transplanted, transplanted as well. Now, kidney is still the most. Um, the most common organ to be transplanted, is that yes, right? Yes, that's oh, correct, okay. because greater than 50% of oh. all organ transplants are, are still kidney. Really? The, what is the most complicated transplant? Probably heart or heart. liver. Heart. Uh, although but, liver was mm -hmm. one of the earlier ones. Right. But, so that wasn't because of any HLA matching problem, but because of all the, say, connections, the heart tissue needs to be yes. made, right? Yes. Oh, 
Wow, mm -hmm. that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been called one of the world's rare HLA historians, right? Now, you've been noticing a lot of breakthrough findings throughout your career, and you've had a long career. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are some of the things that were very critical to bringing the field along? The field of HLA in general, mm -hmm. I would say, was a major breakthrough mm -hmm. uh, the whole area. In, in pushing forward or advancing the mm -hmm. field of transplantation of, of organs and bone marrow. Right. Uh, I would even go it's further and say it, that wouldn't have gone forward without HLA, right? Exactly. exactly. Right. Then the big ground baking um, mm -hmm. invention mm -hmm. or a discovery came with the DNA technology or the I advent see. of the DNA I technology. Mm -hmm. And that was made possible through an invention uh, called uh, the thermocycler. Mm -hmm. And the thermocycler, what that did was uh, enable multiple replications of mm -hmm. DNA mm -hmm. uh, in a polymerase chain reaction. Wow. And mm -hmm. uh, for that, the inventor, Kerry Mullis, re received the Nobel Prize. Is that right? Yes. Oh, so okay. that really uh, put a big foot forward or step mm -hmm. up for the mm -hmm. uh, the uh, not only the a definition of the mm -hmm. HLA, because more groups mm -hmm. of proteins mm -hmm. in the HLA complex mm -hmm. were identified. Mm -hmm. Additional varieties of mm -hmm. HLA were identified. I see. I see. And uh, it gives the opportunity to choose better donors mm -hmm. for any wow. of the, the recipients. So I saw one of these at, at the lab, at your lab when I visited. And um, it's, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, but then, you know, having this multiplier, put more and more needles in. Is that kind of like it? Yes, yes, <laughs> okay. and it's growing <laughs> okay. uh, every day. Well, New wonderful. types are being uh, that's determined. Wonderful. So how many people are waiting for organ and bone marrow transplants? Well, right now, the list is uh, hovering around 114,000 oh. individuals in the U.S. alone oh my goodness. who need an organ transplant, oh, but okay. only about a fraction of those, about 75,000 or so mm -hmm. people are actively on a waiting mm -hmm. list for I organs. See. Now I on see. the side of uh, bone marrow transplants, about 75,000 wow. total patients wow. are waiting for matches. So there's so much more hope now, you know, with this new technology. Mm -hmm. Now, the other part of your lab's work is in immunogenetics. What is it, and why is it important? Well, actually, immunogenetics uh, could be the uh, umbrella mm -hmm. of our work. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about matching for bone marrow transplants, mm -hmm. and a big part of that is immunogenetics mm -hmm. uh, and the DNA mm -hmm. and finding the link between the immune system and genetics. I see. I so see. with the typing, for example, mm -hmm. we've seen commercials on TV about mm -hmm. finding our roots and right. our ancestry. Right. Well, that's part of immunogenetics. Right. We don't just do typing and screening mm -hmm. for antibodies. Right. We do other tests that uh, are showing links between uh, certain HLA mm -hmm. varieties mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. particular diseases. Right. And so our laboratory tests for those right. those uh, links. S someone once told me that uh, you know Stanford's. Uh, HLA lab is so good, it can find you, you know, the tribe in the Amazon jungles, you know, <laughs> through the DNA. Yes, that's very true, <laughs> because, uh, because of that, there are certain uh, HLA varieties mm -hmm. that are maybe of a rarer mm -hmm. type right. in certain populations. Mm -hmm. And so with the power of the DNA technology that mm -hmm. we have now, mm -hmm. we can locate those rare types mm -hmm. and I then see. translate it to finding the mm -hmm. best match for a hard to find 
uh, HLA type mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, for That's a waiting wonderful. patient. You know, uh, Wendy, you've had such a unique career at the HLA lab. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who's interested in a career in that field? Well, I heartily recommend that anyone interested in the medical technology mm -hmm. field mm -hmm. uh, direct their attention to come to join us mm -hmm. in the HLA laboratory. Transplantation is here to stay. Uh, it, and, and it's getting uh, more important. And it's right. getting more important because right. we're able to save lives. And, right. and even though the, uh, the source of the organs may be limited, Mm -hmm. There is a groundbreaking research now mm -hmm. in uh, ways that we can mm -hmm. get around the, the limitations in uh, numbers mm -hmm. for transplant. And that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wendy, I know you brought a unique memento today. Tell us about it. Yes, this is an autographed copy of the book entitled History of HLA. 10 recollections mm -hmm. uh, from 10 of the pioneers of the wow. field of HLA. It includes uh, two of my mentors, uh, first uh, Dr. Payne, mm -hmm. also Dr. Paul Tarasaki at wow. UCLA, who was my first boss, who oh, actually wonderful. introduced me to the field right. of uh, HLA. What's unique about it is it's autographed, isn't it? Yes. It's autographed. Yes by Dr. Payne, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Oh, thank you so much, Wendy. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much this means to me and to my husband. You know, talk to you and people from your lab, you know, who did so much work. Us transplant patients and their spouses often get a chance to thank their doctors that they see at checkups all the time, but we never get a chance to thank the people behind the scenes, uh, like the people in your lab. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Susan. I really appreciate that. Uh, I know that all of my colleagues in the lab, we count uh, all of the patients uh, who uh, have had transplants as mm -hmm. well as are about to receive transplants, one, pioneers right? in the field as well. Oh, so we're all you. in a big team effort. Right. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Wendy, for giving us your unique perspective into this exciting area of histocompatibility and immunogenetics. We look forward to closely following the breakthroughs in this area as more diseases become curable and people are cured by transplants. To transplant patients and survivors everywhere, you and your colleagues are all heroes. We thank you, viewers for joining us today and hope to see you next week on The Better Part.